Hi, I'm Robin Williams and welcome to The City. For the next 13 weeks, we will showcase everything the City of Greater Dandenong has to offer. Its huge diversity of cultures and personalities, its community events, its premier sporting events, key developments and council services, and of course, its unique history and colourful heritage. On tonight's show, we'll have a sneak preview of the new $20 million Noble Park Aquatic Centre, go back in time to a Springvale icon, get into the Christmas spirit, and check out what's been happening in one of Victoria's largest municipalities. As I mentioned before, Dandenong has indeed enjoyed a colourful history. We're here at Heritage Hill, which comprises three historic buildings going all the way back to 1864. I'm standing in front of Benga House, which was home to Dr Hart and his family from 1936 until 1987. With the assistance of a grant from Heritage Victoria, the original maids' quarters in Benga House have been brought back to life just as they were in 1936. The public will have access to these rooms through an audio tour, period display rooms and printed material. The new display was opened recently by the then Mayor of City of Greater Dandenong, Councillor Ros Blades. It's a great pleasure that I'm here to officially uh, open the new maids' quarters at Benga House. Benga was the largest and most expensive house built in the Shire of Dandenong during the mid-1930s. Visitors will be able to listen to original recordings from Mrs Dorothy Hart, owner of Benga House, and several of her maids as they describe life at Benga between 1940 and 1970. But we did even better than a recording. We caught up with Elsie Schilling, who worked as a maid at Benga House from 1939 until 1943, and was back in her old quarters after nearly 70 years. I was very pleased to be here soon enough to see everything put, put up as it was in those days. Dorothy Hart took great pride in her abilities as a cook and was careful to leave nothing to waste. What wasn't used fresh was converted into a supply of preserves, pickles, jams, jellies and dried produce to last the whole year. The display brought back vivid memories of Elsie's daily routine. Uh, getting up early in the morning and getting breakfast ready and uh, having to clean out the fireplace and render over it and uh, uh, set up for the night and then get breakfast ready and then lunch and dinner. The food was simple and uh, wasn't very extravagant and uh, the housework was a couple of long hours but we had Wednesday afternoon off and every other Sunday. We worked from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. No other staff, only the, the woman that done the washing and Mrs. Susha. She done the washing on Monday. No other staff. Elsie obviously enjoyed her time with Dr. Hart and his family. They were very nice people and very easy to work for, and um, we never had any trouble. And who better to ask about the accuracy of the display? Is it authentic, Elsie? Um, yes, a lot of it is, yes. The pantry looks very much like the same. Had all those silver cups in there that uh, he had won and uh, had to clean them every Saturday and uh, all the silverware. And uh, so it looked very much the same. Uh, the kitchen was, I think, they've made smaller. The kitchen was larger than what it is today, but very much the same. The stove looks the same, and the uh, sink's the same, and uh, everything seems to be the same. The room that I had looks very much the same, and uh, the, uh, I had a white, a green uniform with a white apron and white cap and brown shoes. And you could wear your slippers so you were after breakfast and then you had to change into your shoes. But everything, you had to clean the plate at the front of the, the gate. And everything's much the same. Because they built onto it since I was here. 
I built on Mrs. Langley's rooms since I was here. It was, wasn't built then. I have enjoyed today very much seeing everything and seeing old faces and people I knew back then and it's been a pleasure being here. It's my very great pleasure to declare the maids' quarters at Heritage Hill officially open. Thank you all very much. To visit the maids' quarters at Benga House or other Heritage Hill attractions, check out the opening times at www.heritagehill.com.au. And speaking of history, for 140 years, the Dandenong Show has been a must-see for country and city dwellers alike. The 2011 show was again a huge success, with more than 20,000 visitors enjoying the show's many attractions over two days in November. The show jumping events were again popular, with horses and riders of all sizes enjoying the fun. Right, they gallop up. Now they've got to come back in a bend. Turn round the bottom, go back in a bend. Oh, oh Astro boy was lucky. Who's going to get across the line first? Oh, me! He made it alive! And some family legends were made in the produce hall. Obviously a tough job for the judges again. Auntie Marge continues to wow them with her famous quilts. Anyone from Akano? Tractor, truck and car enthusiasts were also catered for with an impressive display of modern and vintage vehicles. But the kids' minds were probably on more important things like rides, games, food, prizes, some show bags, more rides and more food and maybe some bubbles. Hang on, they look familiar. And of course, it's no show without Punch and, uh, and Judy. Oh, that was a nasty dog, wasn't it, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah. It looked like a lot of fun, and it was. All you had to remember was where you parked the car. If you missed it, put the Dandenong Show in your calendar for November next year. Coming up after the break, Daryl Pittman checks out the progress on the magnificent new Noble Park Aquatic Centre. More than just a pool run. More than just a pool, Daryl. Yeah. The new $20 million Noble Park Aquatic Centre is due to open in February. Daryl Pittman called in to check out the progress. More than just a pool, they say, the first upgrade to the Noble Park swimming pool in 50 years. I have with me project manager Rob Becker. Rob, tell us a little bit about this big upgrade. It uh, started with the um, original pool on this site, um, which was built in the mid-60s. Uh, needing to be uh, refurbished and replaced due to um, the amount of water that was leaking from the, the main pools. The new pool was moved um, to a position beside the original pool and it uh, is now comprised of a new 50 metre outdoor pool and a uh, refurbishment of the main pool slide, a, a new Acpra play uh, water playground and an indoor program pool. They're the principal uh, components of the new pool development. Well, that sounds great, Rob. How about we go in and have a look at the progress? Sure, let's go. Behind me, you can see the original water slide and uh, it's uh, being refurbished, repainted, and a new, uh, a new run out at the bottom, which will uh, take place in the next few weeks. The slide is also uh, going to get a, um, a new shroud, some panels, <laughs> which will make it much more impressive uh, as, a, as a, a structure. The area behind me will be uh, a landscape mound for uh, planting and a, a dwarf wall will come along here and there'll be an area above that wall for sun baking etc. Well, the new 50 metre pool is beside me, that's um, a uh, competition 50 metre pool 
it'll have um, a, um, a floating boom 1.5 metres wide in the middle of the pool to operate as two 25 metre pools or it can be moved up to one end to create a, 50, a standard 50 metre competition pool. So that uh, roughly goes from 1.1 metres depth to around about 2 metres at the deep end. The structure you see over the top is a, uh, a shade canopy and uh, that uh, steel works in place with the, sh the shade cloth uh, type material to follow. There will be uh, tiered seating up here for competition uh, events and we'll have um, starting blocks and all the other sort of uh, timing, um, cabling for, uh, for school carnivals etc. Darrell, this is the community rooms. There's three separate rooms that can be opened up into one single room, one large room. And the end room will have audio visual and uh, projector capability. The, um, the, room will, uh, the room at the end will be predominantly used for meetings and, uh, and group uh, discussions. The two rooms here on this end are uh, on a sprung timber floor designed for aerobics and yoga and all those sort of activities, ballet, that sort of activity. So um, it'll be a, a great space to use as single rooms or opened up into one, one main room. More than just a pool room? More than just a pool, Darrell. Yeah. We're standing in the, uh, the entrance plaza area of the, the new um, facility. The, um, the area will contain open sort of areas with seating, a bus pull-in, drop-off zone and the uh, the main entrance is uh, quite a grand space with a reception and um, uh, turnstiles uh, controlled by uh, swipe cards and membership cards and uh, yeah so yeah it's a great space. All the colours are um, have been selected with the assistance of our artists who uh, got involved with trying to link art into the, uh, the finished product rather than put something in later that uh, didn't necessarily fit with the architectural so it's been a very good uh, exercise working with both the architect and the artist. We're in the um, indoor program pool uh, standing on the concourse. The um, indoor pool is a, um, uh, a smallish pool with a ramp and beach entrance. Uh, it's got a, um, a seat for uh, a spa function, so that'll be a bit of fun for uh, people to sit in that uh, in that area or on that wall. Um, there'll be play equipment on the beach entry, so uh, the idea is that that'll work well with uh, toddlers and um, and mums. So um, yeah, the uh, the, uh, the pool relates very well to outdoors. The operable walls on the uh, on the outside wall. It can come up in summertime and it's an uh, indoor outdoor function comes into play. So it should be a lot of fun, Daryl. Well, Rob, that really is looking good. Uh, when's it due for completion? It's due for completion at the end of January 2012, and we're on target for, uh, for that date. Well, it's going to be a, a, a fantastic uh, facility, and I'm looking forward to having a splash in there myself. Yeah, it should be fantastic. Yeah. Good on you, Rob. Thank you very much for uh, showing us through the project. Not a, not a problem. Thanks very much. Sir. Talk to you again soon. Yeah, thank you. It's been a busy few weeks at Sandown Racecourse, as well as the Sandown Classic, thoroughbreds of a different ilk have been tearing up the track. Firstly, it was the big historic Sandown weekend that saw classic cars from bygone eras strut their stuff. Some challenged the circuit in a celebration of better days, while others were content to bask in the admiration of a discerning public. Check out the iconic Peter Brock Tirana, and where did they find all those valiant charges? But before the fumes from the classic cars had even evaporated, the V8 supercars arrived in town. Palm Plaza in Dandenong shook to the sound of engines and the clamour of fans seeking autographs from their favourite drivers. What uh, better day for it uh, to launch the um, Norton 360. Um, absolutely fantastic for the city. Um, you know, it's a great investment in our city and I think also, importantly, uh, 
all the people that uh, the spin-offs that uh, occur from this, whether it be restaurants or um, accommodation, uh, lots of spin-offs for the city, and uh, we only have to look at the amount of people in the mail today to see that how much interest there is. And it's just one of many great events we have in the city, Greater Dandenong. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've uh, we've got uh, our horse racing track course, Sandown Two. Uh, uh, Sandown Cup just recently held. Um, we have our women's uh, basketball side, uh, Dandenong Cricket Club, once again premiers this year. Um, absolute fantastic football club down at Noble Park. Um, you know, won the last two premierships. So this city's absolutely uh, full of sport and. Uh, uh, it's just great for the city to see. They've decided to launch the V8s for 2012 um, uh, in our city again at uh, Sandown. They'll, they've picked Sandown uh, out of all the racing tracks in, in this country to have their launch. And I think uh, uh, what a coup for the city that is. And I think uh, once again, fantastic. Gold FM's Craig Huggins was also busy seeking some good oil for the big race. Yeah, all, all of that stuff, but uh, mainly it's changes from, from the year before, you know, we go to some tracks and, you know, there might be some corners that are, that are resurfaced or new curves or, or things like that, so mainly, mainly changes from the, the, the previous year. The police were there too, but they weren't there for the traffic. They were there to sing and play some great music. Local radio station 97.7 FM SER was also on hand to keep us all informed. But who's this guy? Looks like he's got time on his mind. Perhaps we'll catch up with him at a later date. Well, we seem to be on a bit of an historic kick on today's show, which is right up Daryl Pittman's alley. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Thanks, Rob. Well, we're here at Springy Rock, an icon in the area, Mayoral Charity Day. I've got out my old rock gear. A little bit of trouble doing up the bells. Doesn't matter. Let's go in and have some fun. Yes, it was back to Springy Rock as the old Springvale Town Hall reverberated to the sounds of rock and roll, just as it did every Saturday night during the 1950s and 60s. The old rockers were there in droves as they turned back the clock in support of this year's mayoral charity fundraiser. For City of Greater Dandenong Mayor Councillor Ros Blades, revisiting the halcyon days of the weekly dance seemed an ideal way to raise funds for her chosen charity, the Noble Park Special Development School. Yes, it's going to contribute to a gymnastic equipment which will benefit the health of the children. The old town hall was a sea of colour as the community came together for a great cause. A great community support all of the clubs and groups in the city of Greater Dandenong. I have to say it's very unusual. Prior to even starting, we had $1,500 in donations. And then there's the uh, money from ticket sales, which we have to... Uh, estimate and then of course we haven't finished the raffles yet but I'm hopeful it will be in the region of seven to eight thousand. And a great night affordable for everybody. Well that was the main thing. In, in organising the event the plan was to have an enjoyable evening, fun for a lot of these families who live under such pressure, um, with some nice music, some good food having some fun and enjoying themselves, but majorly a good result for the school, and I think we've achieved that. It's a fantastic night. They've already raised a lot of money to come here for all the, uh, all the patrons. There's about 400 here in the hall at the moment, and uh, we're having a great time. Uh, there's also the raffles they've got to do. They've got the uh, best dress competition, uh, but it all goes to a fantastic cause for the Noble Park Special Development School. Honey Bee and the Stingers were in great voice and had them dancing in the aisles. And even 
behind the soft drink counter. It's a, such a disadvantaged group to be able to get the benefit of the support from the community the way it's been demonstrated tonight is really, really good. But to see the Springdale Town Hall being filled by so many people with such a long association in the area, it's fantastic, it's a good night. Rod should be very, very proud. Oh look, it's fantastic. It brings back memories of when we were here every Friday and Thursday night. We were kids and we loved it and it's just such a great success for Roz. She deserves it and the school, the charity, is just such a well, well deserved cause. So we're just having a ball. They may not be teenagers anymore, but they can still rip up the dance floor. They're a real good community night, Darrell. Great to see a good turn up and with all community um, groups and great, great to see everyone here. And Roz, you haven't lost it, they still call you Twinkle Toes. Oh well, you know, I think that's a bit of a compliment to my age, Darrell. I, I just enjoy dancing. If I get called Twinkle Toes along the way, well that's lovely. <laughs> The beautification of Dandenong Central Thoroughfare has been completed, with Lonsdale Street being officially handed back to Council by Vic Rhodes. And if you're keen on the odd game of chess, Dandenong's Langhorne Plaza in Lonsdale Street is the place to head for, especially if your eyesight isn't what it used to be. This giant size board combines the twin benefits of intellectual stimulation and exercise. You can check it out until January 2012. Um, I think it's your move. Usually, the Noble Park football ground echoes to the sounds of boot on leather or bat on ball. But the pristine surface of Moodamere Reserve gave way recently to the partying sounds of more than 950 children and their parents, grandparents and friends as they enjoyed their annual Christmas picnic. Tents, marquees and shelters of all kinds filled the oval as the kids were let loose on rides, drinks, lollies, a spot of face painting and some good old fashioned fairy floss. A bit of a queue, but the wait was worth it. The highlight of the day was the appearance of Santa Claus, who arrived in the local brigade's fire truck. Ho, ho, ho! There was no doubt he was the most popular person on the oval. The jolly old fella even came good with an early Christmas present for all the boys and girls who have been good all year. Some happy faces getting in some practice for Christmas morning perhaps. And it wasn't just the little kids who had all the fun, it was a great day for big kids as well. Cheers fellas! Keysborough is celebrating its 150th anniversary and recently at Keysborough Hall, residents old and new gathered to check out the suburb's colourful history. History boards featuring various organisations and individuals were on display, while the highlight of the day was the opening of a time capsule buried 25 years ago by students of the Keysborough Primary School. Unfortunately, the school is no longer, but the memories survive. Don't forget this Saturday night, the Full Moon Christmas Night Market in Buckingham Avenue, Springvale. The market will run from 3pm until 10pm. Food, entertainment, craft, a great night out for all the family. We hope you've enjoyed our first program. We look forward to your company again next week as we throw the spotlight on Greater Dandenong. And we'll meet the full team that'll be taking us through the summer on the city. Thanks for watching, bye for now. Da, da, da.